Well, good morning again. Welcome back to New Life Family Center. Again, I'm Pastor Larry, and uh, we are coming to you from New Life Family Center Church here in Sherwood, Oregon. Um, little white church. If you're around this area, you'll know exactly where it is, uh, kind of between two roundabouts and on Oregon Street here. I believe, if I understand right, we are the oldest building, let alone the oldest church in Sherwood. So uh, it's kind of a cool place to be. It's small, but it's it's it's, uh, it's quaint and it's beautiful. Love to have you join us sometime in all that's going on. So today I want to start by reminding everyone that this coming Wednesday, uh, Pastor Terry will be starting uh, the midweek Bible study we call The Journey. And uh, we've been having a group of people meet through a Zoom call and studying uh, different books and, and passages out of the Bible and, and different things. Walk, when I say studying books, walking through uh, books together and discussing. Excuse me. And uh, so we'd love to have you join us. We're starting up a new one. You do not have to have the book to do this. And so um, we, just so you know, and part of the reason I'm saying this today is we will have a new Zoom address and a new um, password and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you'll need to contact Pastor Terry for that. I'm sure she'll be getting some word out to the regulars. But if you haven't been involved and want to be, make sure you're letting her know so you get all the new stuff before Wednesday. All right. So today we're continuing in the series that we've been talking about. A few weeks ago, Pastor Terry talked about... Um, the captivity of the Israelites. And then we, we've we moved into, that. next week we moved into prayer and why we need to pray. And then last week we were talking more and more about um, why that's important and, and staying close to God and some of those different things. And today we're going to go one step further in this process, talking about uh, our hearts. Now, when we, we looked at the Bible and here in the book of Matthew, and here Jesus is um, talking actually to the Pharisees, and he's kind of talking about them and who they are. Now, if you're kind of new with us, the Pharisees are uh, a group of religious people that aren't, uh, it's about their own, really their own religion. They're making up kind of their own rules to stuff. And they're, they're running, you know, to have authority, control, power, and those kind of things over people. And so it's just not a good thing. So Jesus is very much against the Pharisees and the way they're trying to run church so to speak and so here he is talking to them and talking about them and talking to them and here we're in a portion of the bible that if you have what they would call a red lettered version jesus's words are in red and so he's talking him is actually him talking here in quoting and it says uh oh, sorry here it is so we are sorry i didn't tell you matthew chapter 12 verse 34 Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 he says you brood of vipers how can you being evil speak what is good for the mouth speaks out of which fills the heart now I remember as a young kid somewhere which means this was memorized either in in King James or NIV okay but um what the way I learned it is out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks and last week we were talking about staying in the word and being in the word and how important this was. And it's funny, I've had some people uh, come back to me and, and talk about that they've been doing that and, and they had, they'd fallen asleep, so to speak, in the process and, and how it's, they're on fire right now. They're just excited about what God is doing in their hearts and in their lives because they've gotten back to the basic principles of Bible reading, prayer, and really pushing their lives closer to God. And that's really what this process is. Satan is never going to stop harassing us or ever going to stop to try to get us to walk away. Remember, we talked about the verses a couple of weeks back where it talked about that uh, in the last days, right, there are going to be people who walk away from the faith. Now, when it says they fall away, they walk away, I can't remember the exact wordings now that I read, but it, it refers to people inside the church, and there's a lot of people who believe that once you're in the church, that there's nothing, you know, you can't fall away from God. You, you can't have problems. And I would tell you, our relationship with Christ is an active, ongoing relationship. You know, we hear all the time uh, in our, our day and age uh, about how, you know, people have, 
are getting divorced and how they grew apart and you know they just went two different ways and sometimes even after the kids are grown they found that they had nothing to talk about because it was all about the kids and that kind of they didn't work on their relationship and I would just tell you this morning that you know if we're not working on a relationship if I'm not working on my relationship with my wife uh, if she's not working on it with me I can be working on it with Terry all I want if she's not interested the relationship isn't going anywhere. And that's what we're talking today about this relationship with Jesus, our relationship with God. And we can't forget in the times that we live in, the times of trouble, so to speak, kind of using biblical terms. But, you know, just we, who's happy with the pandemic? Who's happy with COVID? Who's happy uh, wearing masks and being limited and can't go to a movie theater, at least if you're in Oregon and in a lot of these places and a lot of, a lot of the rules that are being put on us as a society. And I really hope that, uh, that these things pay dividends and it's under control. My concern is that there's enough man involved in this and many of them in, in the government area could be getting enough power control authority that they may like this and they want to keep us you know at arm's length and keep us at, at this place and we have to be careful but that's for us to pray about and talk about but no matter how we feel what's going on um and, and maybe purposes for it and reasons for it we still live in a time where we see uh mental health struggles um, i've never seen so many mental health commercials you know dial this hotline go to this website go to you know, call this doctor for people who are struggling emotionally and i'm not saying it's it's dumb or bad i'm just saying wow people are really struggling by being in isolation by being away from people struggling with just emotionally and things in their life and especially that uh um, if you don't have a spouse or you don't have a significant other that you're calling on a regular basis and having communication with, you know, it, it's, it's, it can be lonely out there. And, I, and we begin to just kind of stay gnawing on the loneliness and all the negativity. And I think we have to be careful of that. We have to learn to laugh. We have to learn to enjoy company with one another. And those kind of things are very, very important. And uh, this, this part of this is right, we're talking about guarding your heart um, because it's what Jesus is saying is important. Remember, he says he examines the condition of your heart. It's not just what I do. And I can sin in my uh, actions, but I can sin in my heart as well. I can sin in my mind as well. And I'll tell you, you know, there are times in my other job when I, where I'm checking a lot of trucks where I run into a lot of mean people and I struggle with my own thought life uh, at times on that job or after that job and some of the things. And that's been a real challenge for me, uh, being pushed and tested in areas that probably being a pastor, I haven't been, um, and so, I mean, just the names I get called and the accusations that happen that aren't true and all this stuff, it's crazy. And, and I think it's good for me to be pushed because, you know, it reminds me of what everyone goes through from time to time, especially if you're in any kind of public service, if you're in any kind of uh, job that's working with public. And again, the public is getting crankier due to COVID and, 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 and the, the government stuff just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, uh, not trying to be political, but just for instance, you know, if you're in the oil industry and you were working on the pipeline, what do they said? 10 to 12,000 people lost jobs quickly, you know, when our president signed that, uh, that executive order, shutting that down. So there's a lot of people who are making really good money that, uh, can't just go get a job next door to, to fill it. And so there's a lot of stress and, and a lot of you are out there right now um, are probably stressing, do, am I going to have a job and, and those kind of things. People who run restaurants and, you know, p t teachers in schools and it just, we can just go on and on and on. But here I want to, I want to go back to the, to the scripture again, where it talks about, uh, he's talking to the brood of vipers. He's talking about the, to the Pharisees and he says, for, uh, for the mouth speaks out of the 
of that which fills the heart. Again, I, I heard it out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And, and to me, I like that second way, the way I learned it as a kid, that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we're talking about being careful what we're putting into our heart because whatever is there will naturally come out. And I think it's we, we've got to be really careful on what we're doing in these tough times. And that's why we need to stay close to God. We need to stay in our word. We need to pray, be in prayer. We need to connect with, uh, whether it's over Zoom call or, you know, we, we continue to meet in person here on Sundays and at 10 o'clock in the morning. And however you, you can do that, connect with people of your church, connect with people that you care about who, who will, will give you some strength, who will, who will support you in prayer, who will, you know, talk you through tough stuff and just, you know, make you feel like somebody cares. And that, that stuff's important, but it's our heart that Satan wants to get to. And this is really, really important today. Also, I'd like to take us back to um, the book of Proverbs in, in uh, chapter four. And there's several places in, in chapter four of Proverbs that talks about the heart. And I think it's, that chapter is, 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 worth, is a good read and is worth a read. Um, let me see. Uh, sorry, take it. There he goes. Um, it says, uh, so we're talking Proverbs 4, verse 23. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for it's from the flow, from that that flows the springs of life. Um, that's another one that I, I learned as a kid that um, to guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life to protect, watch what we're putting in, watch what we're doing, watch what we're allowing ourselves to be around. And I think sometimes that can be hard because our heart overflows into everything in our life. And like I said a second ago, that's what Jesus is, is looking at. That's what Jesus is uh, examining is our heart. You know, I can, we all can. I was using me as an example, not to point fingers, but we all can go to church for an hour, 90 minutes, maybe two hours, and put on a good face. Maybe you can go to work for eight hours and put on a good face. But day in and day out, we will be exposed for who we truly are. And that's what concerns me as I talked about, you know, sometimes my feelings towards certain drivers who, who treat me a certain way. You know, my natural human flesh wants to treat them that way back. And, and that's been a struggle of, of just personally, and I'm, being, I'm just being honest, that I have to fight that. And it's interesting, I have a, a lot of drivers who come in and, and we talk about different stuff, and a lot of them said, man, you got a tough job, because I know these, some of these guys that are out here. And uh, not that I'm looking for sympathy, because I know your situation is hard for you too. I'm just trying to tell you I relate. And we've got to be careful. God has to be first and foremost. And we can't just say yes to Jesus and become a Christian, and the, now we're riding the rest of the time through. It's yes to Jesus, and now we work on this thing called salvation. We work on our lives. We work on our hearts. We work in ways that we have to be really, really careful of. I'm excited about what we've been talking about because I've, a, I've seen people in the church and, and online uh, who are, are communicating with me and they're getting a lot out of this. It's, it's hitting a chord right now because it seems to be timely. And God put this on my heart. Because we are in a mess as, as, a, as a country, as a world, uh, especially us in Oregon being in the Northwest, you know, we seem to have a lot more clothes than a lot of other states have and, and that kind of stuff. You know, it's funny, I was home for lunch today before I came down to, to uh, video this, and it's not really lunch, I have lunch about six in the morning. But anyway, um, I was eating with Terry on her lunch and uh, saw this, this um, commercial for a new movie coming to theaters. And I thought, wow, it's been a while since I've been to a movie in a theater, you know, and I don't, who knows how long it'll be. And, you know, they're already talking about uh, the next thing is to make sure you have, you have the vaccine so um, you can show your card so you can go to 
group events and, and those kind of things. And, you know, you're out there deciding whether you're going to take the vaccine or not. It's not been tested. I know of doctors who say, we don't know what's going to happen five, 10 years, 15 years from now with people who get the vaccine. We have no idea. It's untested. Now, these are doctors who are going to be giving this shot and this vaccination. And I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to say we've been talking about kind of the last days and all that's going on. And if we are in the last days, we have to be heightened and aware because the world that started was, you know, that in the last days, people will fall away. And so we have to be careful that we don't allow ourselves to get discouraged and depressed and, and to a place and we, we stop reading the word. And I'm gonna say this today and then before, before we end, we as American Christians seem to be, we're great Christians as long as things are good. And when things get tough and I, you know, there's a list of tough things in life, pick one, pick several and they're going on right now, or they could go on, we have a tendency to kind of just pull back and say, well, where's God now? If he loved me, he would be taking care of this. See, we really ultimately, down deep in our lives, we really want life to be smooth and easy once we become a Christian. And anytime it gets tough, it's God's fault. And yet, uh, I've said scriptures over and over and over, James chapter one, Consider uh, pure joy you know, through trials of many kinds, okay? We're, we're, these are times where God's trying to grow us and make us stronger and make us better. And further on down in, that, in those verses in James chapter one, it talks about why. It's for our strength, it's for our, endu our endurance. But we were really soft as American Christians. We really, we really are. We read about martyrs in other countries and we just think they're wonderful and praise them. But if we get put in that same position, you know, I think we're gonna struggle. And I say we, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. We've had a really good, easy life here in America compared to a lot of places. And so if we're in the last days, if, 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 right? If we're there, then I would just encourage, we really have to stay close to God. And we have to make sure that our hearts never waver. And that's, that's my prayer and our challenge today is, is that we don't waver in the tough times. Let's go ahead and pray today. Father, I just thank you that in the days of, of turmoil and struggle and disease and uh, you know all uh, changes in governments and all the stuff that's going on, Father, I just pray that your children, us, the ones that are hearing this, will not give up on you and not shrink back from who we are and will not forget what you've done for us in our lives, that you are there. And then sometimes when things get a little rough, it's okay. You still have it and you're still in control, but you're allowing us to go through this. Father, we thank you. We love you in Jesus name. Have a great week. Stay, stay close knit with your, your brothers and sisters in, in, in Jesus, uh, whether it be Wednesday night in Zoom with Terry, whether it be Sunday night or any time throughout the week you're listening to this. If you can come on Sunday morning to church, awesome. Uh, if not, we're praying for you. And just know that people care. You're not, you're not going through this alone. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.